Welcome to Wheels Up with Sunrise on Wheels. I'm Michelle Newman. Today's program is all about summer fun. And like all Wheels Up episodes, it has three segments. First, I'll take you on a trip to visit some beautiful beaches around the world and learn about animals that live in the sand on the beach. Next, our friend Caroline will show us how to make popsicles, a sailboat, and how to make beach sand with flour and baby oil. Finally, I hope you'll shout out your answers and play along with Summer Fun Trivia. I love the summer. What about you? There's so many things that you can enjoy outside, like riding bikes, whitewater rafting, going to the park, kayaking, sailing or rowing. But my favorite activity is going to the beach, and I'm lucky I have one not too far away. I find so many things to do at the beach, I love to take long walks, swim and jump in the waves, build sandcastles, collect really pretty different shells. I try to find ones that are almost perfect. Or watching my grandson's bodyboarding. Today I want to take you on a journey to some beautiful beaches around the world. While we mostly think of beaches as areas located along the shoreline of water bodies such as oceans, you can also find some amazing ones near lakes or rivers. Lake Tahoe, spanning the border of California and Nevada, is lined with tons of gorgeous beaches, perfect for swimming and stand-up paddleboarding. Beaches all over are made of loose rock particles of materials, such as sand, gravel, shingles, pebbles, or sometimes shells. Most, most beaches are found on the coast, where wave action Currents, tides, and seawater rises continuously to rework and shape the sediment. As a result, beaches are a dynamic, natural phenomenon changing all the time. The sand on beaches has an interesting composition, mostly silica. This is a sort of mineral quartz that makes up most of the sand in non-tropical and inland beaches. Calcium carbonate comes next, which is mostly aragonite created over half a billion years from life forms such as shellfish and coral. It dominates beaches near reefs, such as in the Caribbean. The sand granules on beaches have a texture somewhere between silt and gravel. If we look at beach sand through a microscope, the image is fascinating with tiny shells and other minerals mixed into the particles. There are many sand islands in the world, but Fraser Island is the largest in the world. It's down by the Australian continent, just off the Queensland coast. Cool, right? Did you know that beaches can come in many different colors? While we usually think of beaches as being either white or gray or yellow, you can see beaches of many colors all over the world. Here's a purple sand beach. Pfeiffer in Big Sur, California. It gets its distinctive coloring from quartz and manganese garnet that washes down from the hills. Hawaii is home to a full rainbow of colored beaches. Papakolea is covered in olivine crystals from the lava rocks that surround the area. This beach is a vivid green, a beautiful secluded spot you'll feel like you're practically on a private island, but it's not easy to get to. Volcanic sand forms when lava hits the ocean and shatters, making for some amazing beaches. Sometimes they're black, like this one in Hawaii's black sand beach, or sometimes they're red-hued like this one in the Galapagos. And what do you think of this bright pink beach in Bermuda? Horseshoe Bay Beach's pink is the result of nearby coral reefs, which are inhabited by a unique aquatic organism that lives in red shells. When they die, their shells are washed ashore. When exposed to the sun and mixing with sand, it gives the beach a pink shade. Of course, one of my favorite activities at the beach is to make a sandcastle. Check out this Guinness World Records tallest sandcastle ever made. Over 57 feet tall in Germany and it was made completed on June 5th, 2019. It took a team of 12 sculptors 
eight technicians three and a half weeks to complete the sandcastle, and it took 11,000 tons of sand mixed only with water. There are no other additives or internal support structures. Can you believe it? The very longest uninterrupted stretch of beach is 152 miles long in Brazil. It is the Praia de Casino, or Casino Beach, and it is so long it's known to span the length between the seaport of Rio Grande all the way down to what is considered the final stretch of the Brazilian border before it runs into Uruguay. The beaches in Brazil are famed for their warm temperature and warm sand and have several fun water activities, including their famous surfing. While beaches might look the same from one day to the next, they're changing quite rapidly. Shorelands can expand, shrink, or change their shape by many feet in the course of a single day. This is due to changes in the wind, the waves, looming storms, and other weather extremes. One of the things to be careful about when swimming at the beach is rip currents. Rip currents are the number one safety threat. You may have heard of rip tides or undertows. That's not the same. Rip currents are narrow currents in the surf zone that move swiftly away from shore. Rip currents can be as narrow as 10 to 20 feet in width, though they may be up to 10 times wider. Rip currents begin to slow down as they move offshore beyond the breaking waves, but sometimes extend for hundreds of feet beyond the surf zone. They can travel at speeds over five miles per hour, faster than an Olympic swimmer, which makes it dangerous and potentially deadly. Rip currents can occur in any weather. Waves don't have to be big. Two to three feet is sufficient. And often it's a beautiful day after a storm. They usually occur during low tide, but they can occur at any time. Usually they form where sandbars are near the shore and occur at breaks or channels and are difficult to see. It's easier to see from higher up, which is why it's important to be where a lifeguard sits high and is able to spot the current. Riptides are a hazard, so watch for flags and listen to the weather forecast. Rip currents can pull you into the ocean and are powerful and dangerous. If you feel like the water is pulling you from shore, it is best to swim parallel to the beach until you feel like you have passed the hazard. Keep your head above water and don't exhaust yourself. Yell for help. This will allow more time for you to be rescued or for you to swim back to shore once the current eases. A riptide is not an undertow. The undertow is essentially the backwash that occurs on the beach when a wave has come ashore, the water is filtering back into the ocean. Undertow may knock you down, but it won't, shouldn't pull you out to the ocean. The beach may seem empty when there are no humans around, but it's actually the home of many living organisms. Several animals and plants call the beach their home. Microorganisms such as algae and diatoms reside in the sand, and considerable concentrations of diatoms give the sand a golden shimmer. Invertebrates like ghost shrimp, ghost crabs, blue crabs, and other crab species burrow into the sand. Salt-tolerant plants such as seagrass thrive on the beach. Many varieties of sea turtles mate, nest, and hatch along the eastern coast of the U.S., in Baja, California, and in Hawaii. As each of these species is endangered, it is vital that their nesting grounds and reproductive activities are not disturbed. Females nesting turtles are very sensitive to disturbance and may abandon their attempt to nest. It's not a trip to the beach without sea and shore birds. Pelicans, coromonts, loons, grebes, gulls, herons, the list goes on. There can be a hundred species of shore and seabirds on your beach. Piping plovers, snowy plovers, and terns are just a few of the endangered birds that uses the beach to nest and feed. Some marine mammals, such as seals and sea lions, need the beach to rest, molt, breed, and give birth. They can also be lolling on the sand because they're warming themselves in the sun. It's always a treat to share the beach with these beautiful creatures. 
There's a really funny beach with swimming pigs. The pigs live on Big Major Key, one of the over 365 islands in the Bahamas. It's entirely uninhabited by humans, and you must take a boat to get there. <laughs> Pretty funny, right? Boneyard Beach in South Carolina is an eerie-looking place with its bleached trees soaked in salt water and dried in the sun. The effect creates a haunting forest and looks like something from another world. It's a fantastic place to search for shells. Do you have a seashell collection? Did you know a seashell isn't an animal? It's a portable home for a wide variety of animals. The animals that naturally live in these homes are mollusks, like snails, slugs, slant, clams, and mussels. They have a soft, unsegmented body and live in aquatic or damp habitats. That said, not all mollusks use a shell. For example, octopus and squid don't need a shell. Instead, they use other means of defense, like their ink or poisonous suction cups on their tentacles. Mollusks are sophisticated shell builders. They pull 95% dissolved calcium carbonate from the ocean. The rest is mostly protein and a little bit of sugar to create their exoskeleton. This shell becomes their home for the rest of their lives. They don't just wear them like a hat. They control how the shell is made. So many different shell shapes. It doesn't look like anything like a stick of chalk, does it? The cool thing about seashells is that they grow with the animal. As the mollusk gets older and bigger, so does the shell. It expands a little bit with each passing day, giving more space for the animal inside. The only exception here are hermit crabs. They aren't mollusks, they're crustaceans. But despite this, they use seashells too. However, they don't make their own shell. Instead, they wait for a mollusk to die, and then they occupy the empty shell. They'll use a wide variety of seashell types, too, as long as they fit in it and can carry the shell around with them. And this isn't something new. Hermit crabs existed for millions of years, and they've always used other animal shells to shield them from predators. In fact, the oldest hermit crab using a shell, an ammonite shell, dates as far back as 130 million years ago. This was found in the UK. Have you ever put a seashell up to your ear? Don't the echoes sound like ocean waves, even when you're miles away from the beach? Truth is, those aren't ghostly echoes of the ocean. Seashells have a unique shape that make them amazing amplifiers for ambient noises, including air. The sound you hear is air passing through the shell, amplified to a great degree. Well, it's time for our beach adventure to come to an end. I hope you enjoyed! to do another craft feed today. Today's video is all about summer fun and fun activities you do during the summer. One of my favorite things about summer is ice cream. So we're doing this really fun ice cream craft and we're also doing the sailboat craft and at the end we're doing a really fun science activity. I hope you have fun! For the sailboat craft you will need a background color for your sailboat to go on and I'm using light blue. a piece of paper for your boat and for your sail, and I'm using brown for my boat and white for my sail, and a color for the waves that's different from your background, and I'm using dark blue. You will also need a popsicle stick, glue, scissors, and for the waves, I'm using a white crayon, and to draw in between the waves, I'm using a blue marker. So first, we're gonna make our sailboat. So first you need your popsicle stick and your glue and we're gonna put some glue all over the popsicle stick. And then we're gonna stick it to almost the top of the paper so that we can put a lot of waves underneath it. So it should look like that. So now we're gonna make the sail for our sailboat. So you need whatever color paper you're gonna use for your sail and I'm using white. 
and we're gonna cut out a big triangle shape. And I chose white paper so that later on I can decorate my sailboat. So it should look like this. And it doesn't matter if it's perfect because we're gonna change it a little bit. So now I'm gonna take the flat part of the triangle and I'm gonna cut a semicircle shape. So it should look like that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue the end of it onto the popsicle stick. Like that. And now we're gonna make it so that it looks like it's flying in the wind. So what we wanna do is you're gonna fold it like this. You're gonna fold it up and then put a little bit of glue. Like that. And you can do it as many times as you want. I'm just gonna do it twice, but you can do it more than that. So that's what mine looks like. Now we're gonna make the boat for our sailboat. So I'm using brown paper, but you can use any color you want. And I'm gonna take the flat side and make a big semicircle. And once you cut it out, you can adjust it to whatever size you want it to be once you hold it up to the paper. But I'm gonna make mine about that size. And now I'm gonna glue it on my paper. And I'm also gonna glue part of it on top of the popsicle stick so that it makes it look more 3D. So it should look like that. Now I'm gonna make the waves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut three strips of paper the long way for my three layers of waves. paper on the glue but only a little piece and then we're going to fold it back only a little bit put a little bit on and fold back and you're going to do that all the way across so this is a little bit that I did and so that's what it should look like so I'm going to continue doing that all the way across so fold back and then stick it a little bit and continue doing it until the end of the paper. So this is what mine looks like. And as you can see, it looks really 3D. Now I'm gonna add two more layers of waves. details to my waves. So I'm just going to add with my white crayon some wave lines and then I'm going to do another line over it with my blue marker so that it stands out a little bit and I'm just going to do a few of these all over the waves. mine looks like when it's done but you can go back and add even more details to the waves or the boat or you can even add a sun or some clouds in the background. For the popsicle craft you will need some paper, scissors, glue, some popsicle sticks, yarn, and some markers. And I'm using gems and pom-poms to decorate, but you don't have to use those. Markers will work fine, but if you have those things to decorate, then you can also use those. So now we're gonna cut out the popsicle shape. So I'm gonna line up all my paper, and we're gonna cut it out, and make sure that you have an even amount of paper because you're gonna make two sides of your popsicles. 
So I'm making two popsicles and putting them on my string. So I have four pieces of paper because there's two sides of each popsicle. So this is my popsicle shape. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna decorate them. So I'm using my markers and my gems and my pom-poms to decorate. And I'm only decorating two of my popsicle shapes because I'm not gonna decorate both sides, but if you wanna decorate both sides, then you should decorate all four. So now that I have both of my popsicles decorated, we're gonna put them on the string. So first, I'm gonna glue the popsicle sticks onto my non-decorated popsicles, and I'm gonna put them in the middle so that part of it is coming off. So now my popsicle sticks are in the middle of my paper, and now we're gonna put glue all over the piece of paper and the popsicle stick and do that to both of them, like that. And now, we're gonna lay our string down on the paper, so it shouldn't be on the popsicle stick, it should be above that, and it should just be on the paper. So stick that down so that it stays. And now we're gonna put my decorated pieces on top of that, and then stick it down so that it stays. Now this is what it looks like and you can hang it up in your room or wherever you want with the yarn and you can also add more popsicle sticks all along your yarn to make it really fancy. Now we're going to make some really fun moon sand. This is like a cross between play-doh and real sand from the beach. So for this you need three cups of regular flour and one cup of baby oil. plastic spoon to mix it all up. So you want to mix it until you don't really see any more flour so that it's all mixed together. And this is really fun to play with and you can also put like seashells in it if you have. So now it's almost mixed in and now I'm just going to use my hands because I think it'll be a little bit easier and if you want you can wear gloves because it's a little messy. And this is really fun to play with and it feels like sand from the beach. Now I'm going to put my seashells in. So this is what it should look like and this is really fun to play with. I hope you had fun making these crafts with me and as you can see I hung up my ice cream crafts behind me and I hope you have fun playing with your moon sand. Bye! Welcome to Summer Fun Trivia. Today we'll play 10 questions, four answers. Only one is correct. I hope you'll shout out your answers. Question number one. Which animal is not a mollusk? A, octopus, B, snail, C, clam, or D, turtle? Which one of these is not a mollusk? And the answer is turtle. A turtle isn't a mollusk. Question number two. Papakolia Beach in Hawaii is known for its weird color sand. What color is it? A, blue, B, green, C, red, or D, yellow? It is unusual color. And the answer is green. Question number three. Where is the world's longest beach? A, Brazil, B, the United States, C, South Africa, or D, Australia? Hmm, where is the world's longest beach? Five, four, three, two, one, and the answer is Brazil. Question number four. Why are black sand beaches black? Is it A, because of the animals, B, because of the volcanic rock, 
C because of the dirt, or D because of the pollution. What do you think is the reason that they are so black? And the answer is volcanic rock. It's called basalt. Question number five. What shape was the largest sandcastle? It was a pretty cool one in my movie. A, an Egyptian pyramid. B, a tall skyscraper. C, an elaborate bridge. Or D, just a very tall sandcastle. This one's kind of tricky. And the answer is, it was a very tall sandcastle. Pretty cool, right? Question number six. What is the number one safety threat at the beach? A, an undertow. B, a rip current. C, sunburn. Or D, jellyfish. All of them could be problems, but which one is the number one safety threat? And it's the B, rip current. Question number seven. If you see turtles nesting on the beach, what should you do? A, leave it alone and watch from a distance. B, pick it up. C, try to feed it. Or D, touch it. What do you think you should do? And the answer is leave it alone and watch from a distance. It's very important. Question number eight. Which sea mammals might you see on a beach? A, seals, B, sea lions, C, walruses, or D, all of the above? All those sea mammals, they're so much fun to see on the beach. And the answer is all of the above. Question number nine. Where might you see pigs swimming at the beach? A, Florida, B, New York, C, the Bahamas, or D, California. Can you believe you could swim with pigs? That's pretty funny. And the answer is the Bahamas. All right, our last and final question, question number 10. How many shells does a mollusk make over its lifetime? A, one. B, three. C, as many as it needs. Or D, most do not have shells. Do you remember this from the movie? It was surprising to me. And the answer is one. A mollusk makes this one shell its entire life. Well, I hope you enjoyed playing summer fun trivia and traveling around the world looking at beautiful beaches. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to watch more Wheels Up episodes, you can find us at YouTube at Sunrise Association.